All right, because we were talking about the chisel brush, we'll just stick with that theme here. So I'm going to take a Z sphere, drag that onto my canvas, go into edit mode, make it a poly mesh 3D, and I'm going to choose matte cap gray. Now, in order to get a little bit more resolution to work with while we're um, using this, I'm going to hit control D, or you can hit this divide button right here, and that'll just divide it up and give us some more points to play with here. So if I hit B, you probably notice in ZBrush 4R8, we have three new, four new chisel brushes sitting right here. So if we choose this first chisel brush, you're going to see we now have a bunch of different meshes, just like we were doing previously with our multi-alpha brush. Uh, this is the exact same premise. However, you're going to see a little 3D up in the corner. And what that means is it's a vector displacement alpha. And the big major difference between a vector displacement or 32-bit alpha and a regular old 2D alpha is that you can now do undercuts. Uh, it won't be readily apparent in this brush uh, because it's just chiseling back through in one direction. But if you hit B and you do this chisel 3D here, and then you kind of, you know, again, you can just kind of scroll through here. Uh, let's choose this mouth, and you can drag that out, and you're going to see this alpha is actually dragging out a mouth, but it's got interior depth to the mouth. It's got exterior displacement, and also you've got a mouth bag here, and it goes down, around, and behind it. If we do this one here, this mouth, this little alien creature mouth, you're going to see it's dragging out a mouth, and it's able to do these kind of snake-hooked, undercut craziness, right? Uh, so the cool thing about, and this ear too, you can drag out, you can drag out ears now, and instead of Traditionally, when you drag out an ear, it would just drag on an alpha shape of an ear and then go straight back. Now it goes out and in and around and in and underneath, and you can kind of get to see this little undercut here. All of that is you're able to do it with vector displacement. And I'll show you how to do vector displacement, make your own vector displacement meshes. It's really easy, uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. What I'm going to do is go back to this chisel brush, and we'll talk about a little bit more about chisel functionality. So while I'm dragging this chisel brush out, you see I'm set the free hand. I'm taking this alpha, and I'm just dragging it through my mesh. If you choose any of these other ones, that'll kind of give you a different, uh, let's choose this one here. It'll give you a different bevel profile to these, basically we're just cutting in panel lines, right? So we can take this brush tip shape, and now we're cutting in these cool looking panel lines. Now, there's a couple really cool things you can do with this, and one of them is continuous stroke. So what is continuous stroke? If I take this chisel brush, and I'm on my sphere here, I can stop, and I can do a clean cut to the right, and I can stop. As long as I don't lift my pin up, I can cleanly cut and cleanly leave off from my last position and cut across these lines just fine. However, if I start dragging down here and then let go and then start again from this position and then let go, you're going to see it's having a lot of problems getting these things to match up and it really kind of mangles your meshes in between the transitions here. You can avoid doing that by going down here to the bottom where it says morph target. If you open up morph target and you store a morph target, now when I cut across here and then I let go. I'm completely let go here and I go back to my original start point. I can start just from where I left off, no problem. And then when I drag across my mesh, no problem. It's able to go ahead and make those transitions on the fly. And I'll, again, just pick up where I left off. Where all this stuff is happening is number one, you need a morph target stored. Just like with the layer brush, if I hit BL layer, um, if I don't have, if I delete my morph target and I use my layer brush here, here, let's go ahead and crank our intensity up. So I'm using my layer brush with no morph target. You're going to see I can use my layer brush. As long as I don't lift up my brush, it stays on pretty much the same level. As soon as I lift my brush up, it keeps adding to that level. However, if I store a morph target and I'm using my layer brush, I can use my layer brush. It sticks to that one level. If I let go and then come back, it'll still stick to that one level. So same basic principle here. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll go ahead and delete our morph target and we'll store a new morph target here. So we'll talk a little bit about what's causing that. If I go up here to the stroke menu and drag this over, uh, you're going to see we have some new options in the lazy mouse area. So we, ha we always had lazy step and lazy radius, but now we have lazy snap and it's set to 40. So what that means is as I drag this stroke out, oops, let's hit B and go back to our chisel brush here. As I drag this stroke out, I can drag out a straight line. Now, as I start to drag, because we have this morph target stave, as I start to drag here, it'll go ahead and snap to my original last position. If I change this lazy snap down to like say zero, and then I do this, I can do this, and then if I start kind of vaguely in this area, it's gonna start exactly where I, I tell it to. So you get, you're really gonna have to try hard to get it perfectly uh, aligned to that snap. Go ahead and crank your lazy snap up, and that'll go ahead and do some of the hard work for you. 
and it'll go ahead and snap to where you want it. Now, if it does get in the way with other brushes and you don't want the lazy snap, I believe if you set it the lazy snap radius from to four or below, it will disregard lazy snap and then you can just start wherever you want to. Uh, but that is a function is to just do lazy snap and then it'll just leave where you left off. Now, another important thing, if you're wanting to do panel lines and really precise uh, cuts on your mesh, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure your brush size is the exact same intensity as you stroke. So if, as you can see, I'm going from light to heavy as I press down, it's gonna make my brush size bigger here. So I can go from light to heavy to light again to heavy. And then if I leave this and I do light, it's gonna go light stroke and then heavy stroke if you want consistent lines what I would suggest doing is number one you can use your mouse so you can just grab your mouse and just pull and that will make it um, the exact same consistency so if I make my brush size bigger or smaller um, no matter how I press down it's always the same consistent stroke and I have lazy snap on so it should oh we have it on set to four let's crank that up a bit and uh, so it's going to be the exact same intensity and it'll look a lot nicer here another thing you can do if you want to use your tablet is go over here to your brush tablet pressure and then under size and intensity you're going to want to make sure these are maxed out so if I take the size and just crank it up now when I use my tablet it's going to keep my size very consistent just like I was using a mouse 